Fallopian tubes are essential for conception. One third of the cases of infertility will be due to blocked fallopian tubes. What causes blockage of the fallopian tubes? How do we test them and what are the treatments? I'm Dr. Nupanandi, consultant gynecologist and fertility specialist from London. Let's find out more about tubal blockage. Every month, the ovary releases an egg, which is picked up by the fallopian tube. In the tube, the egg gets surrounded by sperm and only one will get entry into the egg and fertilize it. The embryo created stays in the tube for four days and keeps developing. The tube provides the environment needed for the embryo development and also moves the embryo towards the right direction by ciliary and muscular action. By day five, it travels to the uterus. Here, it gets implanted and pregnancy occurs. So, a normal and functioning fallopian tube is vital for natural conception. If the tube is blocked, the sperm and egg will not be able to mate each other and pregnancy is almost impossible. Most common cause of damage to the fallopian tube is infection. Sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia, gonorrhea, tuberculosis, infection after abdominal surgery, miscarriage, termination of pregnancy, or intrauterine coils. Even subtle infection, which may not have given you any symptoms, can still cause blockage to the fallopian tubes. Other causes are smoking. Both active and passive smoking can cause tubal blockage. Endometriosis, previous ectopic pregnancy, fibroids, depending on its position, can also cause blockage to the fallopian tube. If the part of the tube close to the uterus is blocked, it is called proximal block. Sometimes the block is in the middle of the tube. If the block is in the part away from the uterus, it is called distal block. Sometimes the finger-like projections at the end of the tube can get damaged, called fimbrial block. If the tube gets swollen due to collected secretions, it is called hydrosalpines. Tubal damage do not give you any symptoms. It is usually diagnosed at the time of investigation for infertility. You may have symptoms due to the factors causing tubal damage, like pelvic inflammatory disease or endometriosis. Occasionally, if you have got hydrosalpings or swollen tube, then the fluid from the hydrosalpings can trickle back into the uterus and give you vaginal discharge. The first essential step to diagnose tubal blockage is to take a detailed history from you. Nobody is born with a blocked tube. Tubes get blocked if you have infection, endometriosis, previous surgery or ectopic pregnancy. So it is important to find out if you have got any of these risk factors. If you do not have any of these risk factors, then the chances of you having tubal blockage is extremely low. In that case, you can carry on tying naturally if you have no problems with ovulation and your partner's semen parameters are normal. Majority will fall pregnant naturally. If you do not conceive in 6 to 12 months, then you can consider testing your tubes using tests like hysterosalpingogram or hycosy. In HSG, dye is instilled into the uterus and extra taken. If the tubes are open, then dye can be seen flowing out through your tubes. The dye will not flow out of the tube if the tube is blocked. If HSG shows that your tubes are open, then it's quite accurate. But it's not very accurate if it shows the tubes are blocked. 6 out of 10 women diagnosed with blocked tube on HSG will find their tubes to be normal if they retest with HSG or undertake a laparoscopy. So if you have been diagnosed with tubal blockage with HSG, then please remember to retest it to confirm. In Hycosy, instead of X-ray, ultrasound scan is used to see if the dye is flowing out through your tubes. It has additional benefit that during the ultrasound scan, your uterus and ovaries can also be checked. And if it is combined with 3D scan, it further increases the accuracy of the result. If you have got any symptoms of endometriosis, like pain in your lower abdomen or painful periods, 
then laparoscopy is advisable to test your tubes. At the time of the laparoscopy, it can be checked if you have got endometriosis and which can be treated at the same time. If you have got one tube blocked and the other tube normal, then you have every chance of falling pregnant naturally or with IUI if you have no other causes of infertility. There is good evidence that women with one fallopian tube have same chance of pregnancy as women with both tubes normal. If both tubes are blocked, then the options are surgery or IVF. Surgery cannot be done in all cases. It's only possible if the block is minimal and the majority of the tube looks healthy. However, after the surgery, there is increased risk of ectopic pregnancy, surgical and anesthetic complications, and the tubes can get blocked again. IVF is preferred if you have other causes of infertility like abnormal semen parameters or you have been trying for long duration or if the tubes are badly damaged beyond repair. In that case, do not waste time in trying to fix the tubes, rather move on with IVF sooner. Delaying IVF will only reduce your chances of success. Only in certain cases, whether the block is in the proximal part of the tube that is close to the uterus, it can be treated without surgery. And the treatments are tubal flushing and tubal cannulation. Tubal flushing basically means doing a dye test with HG. The dye flows through the tube and clears up if there is any minor blockage due to mucus plug. There is good evidence that women do fall pregnant naturally within 3-6 to six months after a dye test with HSG. Tubal cannulation is a procedure which can be done at the same time with HSG. Under extra guidance, a fine wire is passed through the vagina into the uterus and to the proximal end of the tube to clear the block. It is only possible if the block is mild. Unfortunately, if you have hydrosalpings, then the tube is grossly damaged and is beyond repair. Trying to fix the hydrosalpings by surgery will not increase your chances of pregnancy. You should move on with IVF sooner. There is good evidence that hydrosalpings can reduce the success of IVF by over 50%. And that is because the fluid from the hydrosalpings can trickle back into the uterus and can be toxic to the developing embryo. Hence, if you are diagnosed with hydrosalpings, you would be advised to remove it or at least clip it or disconnect it from the uterus by laparoscopy before undertaking the IVF treatment. So to summarize, an open and functioning fallopian tube is vital for natural conception. Most common cause of tubal block is infection. Both active and passive smoking can cause tubal block, so avoid smoking. Even with one patent fallopian tube, you have good chances of natural conception but see a specialist if you do not fall pregnant in 6 to 12 months. IVF has become the main treatment method for women with tubal blockage. Surgery can be done only in few selected cases. Thank you for listening. I hope the information was useful. If you have any questions about tubal blockage, please put it down in the comment box. Thank you.